Hey everybody, welcome back to Cutthroat Research. As always, it's me, Tyler, and I'm here with my friend Ryan. Hello. And we're here to bring you some more Keyforge content. Absolutely. So, uh, this week in Keyforge, what, uh, what, what do we got to talk about today, Ryan? This set week three? in Keyforge, oh man, set three. Set three has been a topic of our podcast pretty much for its entirety, because that's... <laughs> The, the podcast started shortly after set two and the hype for set three has been a uphill grueling train that we've been riding but we're almost there we can we can see over the horizon set three is right around the corner um i know germany had a sealed event uh, a, a big tournament uh with set three this past weekend so uh, all the european players who didn't get to go to their local target and pick up some early set three packs uh, are getting their chance now if they didn't get anything from from Rachel uh, on the Facebook group. So that event, uh, I didn't actually get to see any of the gameplay from that event, um, so I don't have any commentary or any insight into uh, those matches, uh, unfortunately, but I know English boxes got sold out there uh, pretty quickly, um, and I, I, I heard good things over overall from the event, so uh, that's exciting. Um, I know we have a store championship, not an Oster, we had a store championship that just finished this past weekend that you and I both attended that we're going to discuss a little bit more in depth as the episode goes on. Um, and in no particular order, by the way, but the other topic I know we have is our prime championship at Prodigy Games uh, on the eastern coast of Florida. Uh, kind of pretty, pretty far, about an hour north of Miami. I think I think it's near West Palm Beach. Um, yeah, it's but that is going to be the 16th. Um, we do have some information about that tournament as well which we're gonna discuss uh when we get to the topic uh, we kind of we have some hints as to what the format is expected to be and uh some info about set three whether whether the legality of set three is going to be uh involved in that tournament or not but um overall uh What's what's been going on with you in Keyforge? Uh, I know we had the store championships. Uh, do you find any new decks that you like, even even if they're not set three? Has anything changed in your mentality about set three since you've been playing it? Um, I know we have gotten a few games in with each other, and uh, you played a set three deck at our Saturday local, which we actually made it back to right after our store championship at another another store. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, I did play set three in Chainbound because um. They did reveal on the uh, message boards and Facebook and stuff, Alex and the OP team said that once it was scannable, it was legal in casual events. Right. And Chainbound is a casual tier event. So uh, right. always make sure it's cool with everyone else playing, especially before release date. Double check with your store owners and TOs. But uh, everyone was cool that we actually had, what, two or three people play set three? Um, two that I remember, there might have been a third, but I know I played against two. I think there were only two, because I remember saying who was the only people, like, I remember in the last round facing, uh, the other set three deck that wasn't yours, and I remember saying who else played against both the set three decks today, and I think me and one other person raised our hand, so I think it was just us two. Um, I could be wrong, but I played you round one, and that didn't go very well. That was, that was not a pleasant... Uh, set three experience for me, uh, but I did win my last round against the other set three opponent, so that that uh, reignited yeah, my and... fuel a little bit because it was a little demoralizing the way that I lost to you. It was, it was that was a rough. Game. Yeah, but Definitely. also uh, I mean it's the deck that I've been playing. Yep. I think I opened it the first or second of our like little box openings on YouTube. Yep. It was one of the first handful of decks I opened, and I. I liked it because it had both houses, and I've been playing it since. So I'm pretty familiar with the deck and what it does at this point. Because right. when I've been play testing four set three, it's been pro like primarily that deck. Right. I think so I, you, probably, you, I probably I probably have like twenty and... or so games in with it at least. Ooh, that's actually a, a pretty uh, good number for for getting feedback uh, on a deck like like some people yeah i mean you know me sometimes i'll play my i'll play a deck for the first time and just get destroyed and then i'm just like i don't think i want to play it anymore and... yeah speaking of uh <laughs> of that kind of situational bias you want to tell everyone about <laughs> the deck you played once and didn't like and then yeah Dex of Keyforge had something else to say about it yeah so i mean as we all know decks to keyforge is a very very solid 
system. Uh, the algorithm is great. The, the rating system is pretty good. I, I don't have any complaints about it. I looked at this deck and I opened it on one of our YouTube videos. Um, uh, I'll give you guys the name of it. It is Velocibat Jade, the Orange and Revered. Um, I looked at this deck. It looks pretty cool. I, I definitely, uh, I definitely wanted to play it um, and try it out. Um, sorry, I got something <clears throat> caught in the back of my throat. But I definitely wanted to play the deck and uh, give it an honest shot. Um, I'm a big fan of Taliga. Um, I'm a big fan of Hunting Witch, and this doesn't have Hunting Witch, but it had two Taliga and three Harmonia, which is the new elusive Hunting Witch that only gives you Amber if you have less creatures than your opponent. So it's a toned down Hunting Witch, but still a good card. Um, three Harmonia, two Taliga, and a Key Charge. And I was like, all right, that's that that alone is enough for me to put at least five or six games into this deck and see how it goes and, and try it out. Um, before the rating system was updated on Dexa Keyforge, I went over to Tyler's house. We played a couple games. Um, I think I lost to you two times, pretty hard. And then I also played another game against Floyd with it and lost that pretty hard. So like I'm like, I I think I think right now I'm like one in four with with the deck out of out of five games. Um, and I was kind of disappointed. I, I kind of didn't think anything of it because I was like, well, you know, I don't know all the cards. I don't know all the synergies. Maybe the deck's just not as good as I thought it was. Um, so I put it on the back burner. Haven't really played it. Uh, played in our store championships this past weekend. Uh, I played the same deck uh, at the store championships that I played at the tournament right after where you and the other player played the set three deck. So I played the same deck all day Saturday for both tournaments. Um, and upon... Going back to decks of Keyforge and hearing that all of the set three decks got updated and all the SAS scores are uh, now updated for Worlds Collide, uh, that deck is a gold star deck. Uh, it is now my highest rated deck by 14 SAS, and it's a top 10,000 deck. Um, and I don't know if anybody else in our area has any of those yet based on the new rating system, um, but the deck overall, like every time I look at it on paper, it looks amazing, and I... I really want to play it at Prime if I can fine-tune my mind to actually work with the deck, because I feel like either I'm playing it in a way that isn't meant to be played, or I really just did get really lackluster hands, or, or hands that my opponent just seemed to have the answers for, um, which, which can happen, so I can't let that discourage me, but 67 base AERC. There's 20 synergy, and I've noticed that a lot of the set three decks have like a huge synergy number opposed to the set one and two decks right now. So I, I feel like this could drop a couple points uh, in a month or two if they decide to tweak the system again. Um, but there's two key cheats. There's, uh, I think there's only 14 or 15 creatures and there's six upgrades. And I think that the, the fact that there's six upgrades, the average in a deck is one, that's going to be the hardest thing for me to get my head around because I don't really use decks with upgrades to begin with. Well, like I, I, the average, uh, the average is one as of set one and two. I think set three will bump that average probably to three, two and a half to three. Yeah, I think three is a good average for set three, and that's going to be taken into account, especially with all the Star Alliance creatures that are pseudo upgrades or half upgrades. So I don't know how the system recognizes them. Does it count them as half a creature, half an upgrade, or is it like a full creature and a full also, upgrade? But, also, even if the synergy does take a hit, like because twenty is ridiculous, you're talking about like top top one percentile or even less than that of yeah of synergy bonus. But the average is seven, if if I'm reading this graph right for synergy. Mm -hmm. Even if you go to that, you're still right. looking at a seventy four, which, which is still my highest deck by still, one point. <laughs> It's still like a pretty pretty high score yeah, as if, far as the new if it only had goes. seven synergy it would still be my highest deck by one point so like 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 you said i agree with you um i think that uh it's it's a it's a a mix of me not getting the greatest hands but also not knowing how the deck's <clears> supposed to function um and i definitely see myself grinding this because like i said i want to play it at store champs if if i feel like i can figure it out um but that's going to be my goal now, for the next few weeks for sure I'm actually uh, I'm looking at the desktop version of this right here yep. on Dexy Keyforge, and even I don't think your synergy will drop that much, even if it's updated. No, I think it could, I think it could go to 15. Card, but if you scroll over each card, it tells you what the synergies are. Oh, and really? okay, okay. It, it makes right. sense why these synergies are here. Yeah, so, I mean like, Harmonia, 
in itself, just multiple harmonios is like yeah. exponential so you have, synergy. You have how many creatures was it? Fifteen. Yeah. So that's a, a lower creature count. I would say that's probably the upper lower creature count. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that's, that's that's a high number for a low number of creatures. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's, having it's, triple it's lower harmonia middle class. with that. Triple harmonia with that is pretty big, especially when what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of those are in untamed. Yep, seven untamed, three star alliance, and five Saurian. Um, and the three star alliance feels kind of bad because I, I think I feel like I looking at the deck on paper, I feel like I'd be calling star alliance as my house uh, more often than the other houses because of Book of IEQ, um, the removal cards like Zap. Um, and red alert. So I feel like I feel like Star Alliance is gonna be the wonky part of the deck that I have to flush out because of the low creature count. Um, but but the... red alert with low creature count. Exactly. Amazing. I was gonna say red alert. If I have an empty board, <laughs> like... red alert. Even with just if I just have red alert and Lieutenant Kirkar, like if that's my only two Star Alliance cards in my hand, that still doesn't feel bad. Like period. And then so... the types of key cheats you have. You have key charge and untamed. Yep. Which with uh, harmonia is really big. Oh yeah, three harmonia have, and the four other. Creatures. You have a nature's call, so you can play like say they have a board of four creatures. I can harmonia. You can harmonia, play harmonia, harmonia, harmonia. harmonia, harmonia. That'll be call. one, two, three, four, five, six. Amber nature's call. Two of them back. Harmonia, for seven harmonia, amber. Into and then harmonia, else. harmonia into eleven Eight amber. Charge. Yeah, and that that and that would be uh, super free. So. On I top of that, your red alert clears their board if you have low creature count, and your other key cheat is triumph. Mm -hmm. So if you have like no creatures out, you red alert, and then they don't really rebuild their board, and you ha you say you have like three or four creatures out, mm -hmm. and the following turn you drop like a couple Saurian duders, and then you just triumph for a free key. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's like, what I was saying. If if I have if if, if my lot. board is just if I did everything you just said in that order, if my first turn was like, I'll play a Taliga, and then they kill my Taliga and make a big board of four or five creatures, and I do Harmonia, Nature's Call, Key Charge, like, that's cool. But, like you were saying, if I have those Harmonias on field and go into the Red Alert, set up a little bit more board state, as soon as that Red Alert resolves and they play creatures, it, it, if, unless, well, unless I have zero Saurian cards on board to answer that creature... The triumph itself is going to come in so clutch, and and, and the two key cheats some, just makes the deck. You have some cards that feel clunky, but I think uh, they they're probably going to be clunky. I would say less than half the time. Like yep. United United Action feels cl clunky. Yep. Well, but actually, good. in your deck, if you are starting from scratch and they have a board of like five or six creatures, you United Action with your empty board. And then you play your Harmonia play with Star Alliance backup and maybe some Saurians because you could play, you could do all of that in one turn with United Action. Right. As long as I have Star one Alliance, of each on board. But you could play whatever. So you can build your board or you could Red Alert to kill their board. Right. Build your board and then Triumph all in a single turn because of United Action. Yep, yep, absolutely. And and that's what I mean. Like like your deck has a, your set three deck has a lot of uh, house treating. I feel like mine, mine, mine has the house cheating where it counts. Yours just has it everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, and mine's a lot like of uh, the... if a creature sticks. Mm -hmm. The one that I've been playing at least. Uh, speaker now, now Vaughn, speaker or something. It's speaker yeah. Noah, something. I, I don't have it on me. I'm sorry. It's I'm all the worst. good. <laughs> but and and then you have the. Sick Semper Tyrannosaurus. That's a huge tempo card. Yep. Especially on something that, like, if my opponent starts capturing my amber on a big creature and I just ignore it, and they know that I'm ignoring it, like, unless they have this card on their mind the entire game, I'm just going to draw it at one point and be like, all right, that, that 11 amber you've been capturing all game, I'm just going to take all that right now. And yeah, like, that, also... that's just going to swing so hard. It feels like... It has the potential to be like, it. It almost feels like it's a different version of, uh, too much to protect. 
like yeah, almost. Also, though, if you if you have the highest creature, like say they have a turn where they go into check, and their highest creature is a four drop, because all of your uh, Saurians are five. I think all but one. Yep, there's a three. So you and drop that's you drop one of your fives, and then you play tribute, capturing two, exalting, capturing another two. So you've essentially captured four from them. And then I get Tyrannosaurus. And then you play six Semper Tyrannosaurus, kill your five drop, and get five Amber. Yeah, and then that 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 in itself just turned into, what, a three-card combo that just steals five yeah. Amber? And then even That's if you don't bad. have that, you could tribute pretty safely because you have two of the Imperial Scudums that mm -hmm. may give you the destroyed effect that just wipe the Amber on that creature. Oh yeah, absolutely. Another thing too is with the uh, like you were saying with the uh, six Semper Tyrannosaurus. I'm so thankful I have the two Tricerian Legionaries because they both have Taunt to protect my board, like the Harmonias and the Taligos. So the Taunt's going to be useful for those. But warding a friendly creature literally could be I'm going to play a five power creature. I'm I'm going to play Tricerian Legionary. He's going to ward himself. Now I'm going to tribute and capture four, and now I'm going to use six Emperor and move all five Amber, and then destroy him, and it just gets rid of the ward, and I still have a five one with taunt. Yeah, and like, you also have a dumb. copy of Ancient Power that wards a friendly creature with Amber, Amber. on it. Mm -hmm. You yeah, have like Xeno definitely... Training. You have two copies of Xeno Training to capture more. Oh yeah. Uh, you have Zap for spot removal. The Zap and the Nature's Calls, I think, are my only real interaction with my opponent's board. So this definitely feels like a deck where it's going to feel I like mean, set one where I need to into rage. Them. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's to be fighting and those two cards, or three cards, because there's two Zaps. So it's, it's going to be... And then you have Odawak to stop your opponent from stealing from you. Mm -hmm. You have Garcia to make their keys cost two more. Yeah. yeah this Garcia. is a strong deck. Absolutely. Like, like, I feel like, I mean, I can't Even really, I, I, I can't really ask for more cards, but like, if, if, if any of the Star Alliance creatures were the, uh, the one that heals and wards, like, this deck would be, I would never stop playing this deck. <laughs> like, that'd I don't be, think, that's you the, should, I think you should go the, all in on this deck. Just probably. Just become the master of this deck. Just like, 18 Chain Dream. Like, just, uh, if, if you aren't looking already at home, just, uh, to give you guys an idea of some of the smaller little pips on this rating system, even ignoring the number of the rating itself and the synergy, it has 30 expected Amber. Yep. It has 14 printed Amber. And even with the low creature count, the effective power of his creatures is 110. 15 creatures and 110 power is actually like significant. That's ridiculous to me. Yeah. Like I've seen decks with, 20 creatures and only have 90 power yeah so, so i mean it's... the fact that most of my creatures are big is a huge help yeah yeah i mean i think the deck looks solid i definitely i'm looking forward to getting some practice in with you with this deck yeah um definitely. which actually kind of leads into the whole prime championship thing yeah uh, I, I did message the store that's hosting the event they haven't posted it in the event page yet but i was asking if they knew what the the format was going to be and if set three was going to be legal uh they said that they're they're not certain yet or they can't say they they they, they said they uh can't say with certainty but it's probably going to be archon solo mm -hmm. and they said that set three should be legal for yeah the event. When, when you sent the picture to me it, it the way that i read it and i know i can't like put a tone of voice to text but like when i read it in my head it seemed like they were trying to tell us what we wanted to hear because that's what they want to hear but they still don't know, so they're just like giving themselves a uh, escape route if it doesn't go as planned. Yeah, I mean, Which the way I read fine. it was they either cannot confirm with certainty for one reason or another, mm -hmm. or they simply don't know yet, which I don't think is the case. I think it's just there might be a chance it could change. Yeah, yeah, I think right now they have an idea of what they want it to be, and they just need to lock it in. Um, and so and now the question I, think, is, do, I think for the most part they want three? it to be. Archon. What's up? Yeah. I said now the question is do we know life set three? Like, will that give us an advantage or do we play the decks we're comfortable with? Yeah, and that's the thing too, is like if set three is not legal, everything we just talked about with this new deck is out the window for this specific tournament at well, least. Well I think if set three is legal, if you're not playing this deck, I kinda wanna 
Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I think if set three is legal, if I know for sure set three is legal, uh, there's no reason I shouldn't play this unless I literally grind it forever and don't enjoy any minute of it. Like, it's it's yeah. gonna t it's gonna take like the stars aligning in a negative way to make me not play this deck at prime. Um, it's either that or it's not legal. Um, but that's the thing with the tournament only being two weeks away now or two and a half ish. Not not knowing if that's legal is. I don't know where to invest my time, so it's a little disappointing that like I'm ready to play, I'm ready to practice, I want to be ready for this tournament, and I don't have the tools I need to actually get ready. So like, I think for... I think you just split the practice time between this and whatever your deck would be if it wasn't legal. Yeah, and that's that's what everyone has to do, obviously. So like, <laughs> I I can't I can't complain about the fact that everyone's gonna have to choose between their set three and not set three decks because we don't know what the format's going to be but like man it's 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 killing me inside so also, hard just because of how strong this deck is compared to my others i just i want to know also i mean in it, it might seem uh a tad unfair to people but it's also i mean we're talking about a com competitive event where you're meant to win a win a shot at worlds for first place but not practicing with a deck a week before the release does feel like a missed opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, you have a, a essentially you have 10 days of practice that other people who get set three will not have potentially. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And like, that's, that's the trade off right now. So I'm sure, I'm sure once we get confirmation of the format, we'll have more information, um, regarding our decks, uh, I mean, I'm sure some of you at least are interested to hear what, what we're going to play uh, if, if we do end up getting that information. Um, but yeah, other than that, your announcements and the info you gathered from the, the store um, is really the only update we have for that Prime Champ. So we're just going to have to take it with a grain of salt and, and see when we get more information. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked that, I mean, at least for the moment, you have a deck that's in the top 10,000. Yeah, and if that goes away, that's fine. Like, like I'm not even concerned with the top ten thousand. And only, like everyone says, the SAS only matters so much. But it's it's purely the fact that my decks, everything got shifted down. My highest deck was a seventy three, and now out of nowhere, this is an eighty seven. Like that's just like anybody who has a a, a gap that big is gonna be like, oh, this is significant, yeah, an and now you're just motivated. Be, <laughs> an eighty seven would be high on the old system right on like the sas uh 3.0 exactly. so i mean i think that was actually that's higher than no i had a couple higher than that on the old system but yeah the old system my highest two decks are 89 and 90 so like that that probably be 95 at least like and that's well, just i mean if we're me. just going by like the law of averages the average, oh, sorry, excuse me. The average dropped from 77 to 63, so 14 points. So this would be, what, a 101 by that standard? Yeah, if it's, if it's literally number for number, then yeah, that's, that's the math I mean, that's that. a very crude way of looking at it, but. Yeah, but even if I said 90, if I said 95 and you said 101 and we put it in the middle at 98, that's still like, that was what Spysmith was deck. last time, you know? Yeah. And this, I mean, genuinely looking at this, and I looked at Spysmith the other day, like, this looks stronger than Spysmith in every way. Spysmith, uh, the strength of that, and, and for those who maybe didn't listen to some of our previous conversations, Spysmith, uh, one of our players locally pulled a deck that on the old rating was uh, 99, 98? 98. 98, and it was it was a very solid deck. Its, its strength was that it had a lot of disruption yeah. and steel and control it, but uh playing against it a lot i noticed that its weakness is if you're not playing against a deck that generates a ton of amber you can't capitalize on all of those things right yeah so if you if you wait to use your key cheats on the turn where you're going to generate a bunch of amber if you only leave yourself at one or two at a time or even zero i'm sure there's turns where you're just like i'm not gaining amber because i know you're going to take it and i don't want to let that happen yeah so uh, but that's, Whereas that's this deck, way to look at it. You don't need your opponent to do anything. Yep, and that's that's <laughs> that, that's what I kind of like. The fact that I only have those two cards, the Zaps and the Nature's Call. I'm not going to interact with my opponent very much, and if I'm lucky enough to where they don't interact with me, 
I don't know what combination of cards will answer that deck, but it seems like it's a really specific, like, it's going to be more difficult to answer boards that I set up with that deck than others, just, just based off of, like, what I know the deck's capable of on paper. So, um, yeah. So that's done. We got Prime Championships coming up, and I know uh, we're pumped. We're still waiting for more confirmation on that. Let's talk about something in the past rather than something in the future. We had a a second store championships, not a second. It was at a different location uh, in another town over. Um, but we went to a second store championships. Um, this one not as uh, not as exciting as the the first. I guess that's the, the the first word that came to mind. It wasn't as exciting in the store championships that uh, we went to the first time around. That was at our actual local store. Um, our local store had what was it, 25, 26 players or something like that? I think it was 26. At okay. our local. Yeah, so so we had a pretty uh, substantial uh, spike from our normal 8 to 10 crowd up to 25, 26 people for a store championship. That's significant. That felt really good. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do too well in that tournament. You did get your play mat. Um, yeah, I did end up coming top four in that store champs. Yep, um, which is very good. Uh, this store championship's... Just didn't uh, didn't quite take off in the same way. This the the the, the differences. Uh, I will say full disclosure. Uh, our store championships was Archon format. This one was sealed. Um, there the, obviously Archon versus sealed formats. The tournament entry fees are going to be a little different. Um, and the 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 sealed the sealed format tournament was set two only, so we didn't get a choice of set one or two. I think they didn't have set one in stock. I may be wrong on that, but um, we we played set two sealed for the store champs. Um, I mean, what what was your deck, Tyler? Let's let's go over that first. Do you remember what you pulled, uh, or I mean, you don't have to I... look it up, but do you know what the significance of your deck was? What were the big cards that mattered? So I pulled a deck. I do not remember the name off the top of my head, but it was Mars, Logos, and what was the third house? I do not even remember the third. Shadows. It was Mars, Logos, Shadows. Okay. And um, it, it, so each of the individual houses felt pretty strong. Mm -hmm. It had Plague Rats. It had three copies of Plague Rats. It had, uh, like, two Nerve Blast, I think. Okay, yeah. Uh, it, it, like, it, it wasn't terrible. The Mars was solid. It had a lot of the abduction-type theme, the archiving your opponent's cards. Okay. Uh, the problem with that is the Logos <laughs> had a uh, lot of the archive your own cards theme. Gotcha. So you just had, like, a, was... a, another mini purge pile where you were just throwing everything in there. Yeah, uh, one game I had 27 cards archived between me and my opponents. Wow. Yeah. So you almost. And then I had to add that to my hand, and me and my opponent both got, got a huge you. amount of cards. Well, did and you win that game? I did. I did not win that game. I lost that game. Oh, rough. Uh, actually, due to so, it was three rounds. This store championship. Yes. Uh, both of my. I lost both of my first rounds, and the third round, I got a bye. Rip. And I lost both games to the third key, a swindle. Both your games were a swindle both loss? Both games were lost to a swindle, taking me off of my third key check, I believe. And putting them on theirs. And putting them on their third key check, and I could not get them off of it. Oh, man. Do you have, like, a newfound hatred for swindle now? No, I mean, Swindle is, I think, the most balanced of the powerful tempo cards. Yeah, yeah, the big swing cards, for sure. But, uh, uh it's it, no too it's much just, to protect. But... You know, it, it was sealed, and it was single deck play what you get sealed. Yeah, yeah, there were no which... options to select a deck among a few. I mean, the, the entry fee might have went up more. I, I would have been uh, more in favor of being able to select out of two decks. Um, three might be a little much because we probably would have lost some more entry fees. People probably wouldn't have wanted to participate for for much more than uh, what the entry fee was. But uh, I I don't like the one deck sealed thing. And when there's playmats on the line, not that they're like a big big deal, but like when there's extra prize support on the line, the last thing you want to do is be forced to play the one deck that you just opened five minutes ago that has none of the houses you like. 
and like like it it, it 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 opens the doorway for someone to have a miserable time and that just doesn't that's not how stores should do it in my opinion like you want to give everybody the best chance to enjoy themselves and that's that was just not the best path um we didn't clarify i, pretty... I don't even think we got eight people right we did not we it was seven people yeah so, so someone was no getting a buy every shards. round no shards um, um also i'm usually pretty good at sealed <laughs> yeah yeah so I, you're definitely this, this better than a, me at sealed this was a uh it it, it, it happens yeah i'm not yeah. too upset you about can't even, it yeah i was gonna say you want to call it like a wake-up call and not even a wake-up call but it's kind of like a, a shock factor because you were expecting to do better than you did but that's that's literally like the basis of sealed is like you have this expectation but you've still never done this before so you're kind of you're going in kind of blind you might know what your cards do and what your deck is but you haven't played with it before so you have no extra knowledge and i feel like i was at a pretty high advantage in my second round mm -hmm. like i had a turn where i had five logos cards and uh, a zookeeper Mm -hmm. and one of the logos cards was helper bot so i emptied my hand completely and i wild worm hold into a my, uh, harlan mind lock taking his only creature um and passed and he played curiosity which wow. is destroy all scientist creatures and i had like director of zix yeah zix the, researcher the whole hand you just played uh, with i think helper much bot is even a scientist yeah i'm 90 percent sure it is a scientist so it wiped my board, uh, gave him his creature back, because Harlan Mindlock is also a scientist. Like, I, I had one creature at the end of that, and so that that was rough. Oh, that I can was, see uh, that. That would have demoralized the crap out of me, for sure. Helperbot is a... actually only a robot. I just checked it. It's okay, then that might be the card that got left behind from gotcha. the board. Because I remember I had one creature left after it. Yeah. I went from, like, six to one. Jeez. That must, like, I don't... Your opponent must like never plan on getting a good of a curiosity as he did that day ever again. Huh? Yeah, he he was like, I usually just play this for an amber. Yep, sounds about right. That's rough, man. That's like that's like worst case scenario too. It's like I didn't even lose to something I expect, but it's also nothing you could have even tried to plan for. Like, yeah, I mean, in your you're brain, you're ne you're never <laughs> gonna tell yourself I shouldn't play all these scientists. Like that that's just not, <laughs> there's there's no way to think, well, and it's just the unfortunate I mean, if you're not playing sealed, you get a C. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. If although you know, if, I don't even know if my my brain would register. Yeah, because like, curiosity, curiosity isn't a threatening card; it won't stand or, out. Uh, <laughs> what's the one that kills all the elusive creatures? Oh man, I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, I don't think my brain would even register those as like a watch threat. out for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> your your brain. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to be like, oh, I have seven scientists in my deck. I better be aware of that. Like, like that. That's that's high level play to a degree that like i don't think m very many people are ever going to reach like that's just some like genius level brain thinking um and there probably are people who look out for that because they know their deck has 13 scientists and that's the card that just auto loses them but that that's special circumstances um but like you said you top four the first one the archon tournament uh you went into the sealed event feeling confident um hey i came fifth in this one you did come fifth in this one. It might be out of seven four. people, so, but you know, I'll take another top eight. If 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 we got someone DQ'd, you would have got another mat. <laughs> That's fair. That's Just fair. Saying. Just saying. Um, but how did you do at the sealed store championship? This is the part where I just scream woo! No, I'm just kidding. Um, my my sealed uh, experience. I I will admit again, I am I am not even close to as good as sealed as Tyler is. Like Tyler is absolutely better than sealed at me no question in my opinion um sealed is not my strong suit i i'm not a i'm not a fan of drafting and magic uh i'm not a fan of like any of those like like i like deck building games i'll go play resident evil or dc uh i'll play those kind of deck building games but in a tournament level i don't like sealed and draft i like being able to put my stuff together um and that's kind of weird because i'm playing keyforge as my main card game right now which is the opposite of that um, but 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 then again, when I have 30 decks I can choose from, or the one that I've never played before, I, I much rather would have access to that 30. Um, and I'm sure you would like access to it too, but you, you can you can play under the pressure of only getting that one option. Um, and I don't think I've I, I don't think I've uh, reached a skill level of that degree yet for sealed specifically. I'm much better at Archon uh, than I am at sealed. So that being said, 
Um, I did pull my deck up and then scrolled away from it, so give me two seconds and I'm going to make my way back to it. My deck was only a 64 SAS, but uh, I did get top four. I'll just spoiler alert that now. I did get a playmat finally. I won my first playmat from Keyforge events. Um, the name of the deck is T, capital T period, just T initials. Uh, T Foreman, the Cairn Noble. Um, I don't know why, I saw the name of this deck and I just kept thinking of like that 70s show because of Foreman. So I was trying to like make up like a hippie name that started with T while I was like sitting there like looking through the deck for the first time. Um, but it's a 64 AERC, uh, or 62 AERC, uh, 3 synergy, 1 anti synergy. Um, I'm sure I'll click on it and figure out what that anti synergy was, but I was not able to figure out what it was uh, before playing in the tournament, obviously. Um, but it is Brobnar, Dis, and Logos. Um, right out the gate, Dis and Logos are two of my favorite houses, so I was really hyped to see those two. Um, I'm not a fan of Brobnar, but I don't I don't know many people that love Brobnar. Like I don't I don't know anyone whose Brobnar is their favorite house, but I think everyone's okay with Brobnar being in their deck. Like it doesn't feel as bad as Mars for certain people. Um, the significant things that came out of the deck for me. Uh, that I saw before the tournament started. I had a decent amount of removal and board wipes. Uh, for a sealed event, I had an unlocked gateway, uh, which is pretty good. Um, I had a, uh, let's see, I had a Neutron Shark, which is, I think that's really good sealed card. Like, straight up, I just think that's a really good sealed card. Um, I also had a Bouncing Death Cork, another really good sealed card as well. Um, what else did I have? I had a 1-2 Punch uh, with a Tremor. Uh, so those kind of uh, synergize into each other. I have a pound, which is deal two and one to its neighbors. Um, so there was a, there was a decent, I, there was a good number of removal cards and a good ratio of like hard board wipes versus a couple points of damage versus, you know, just ping off monsters. So I like the variety of of uh, spot removal that was in the deck. Um, and. I, I was I wasn't excited about it. I didn't think it was amazing, but I was like content. I was like, for a sealed deck, I'm not gonna complain. If I start if I start whining about the deck, I'm just gonna do worse. I'm just gonna keep my head down and try to look positive. Um, so that being said, round one, um, I played against I, I think I played against the person that curiosityed you, um, and thankfully I didn't have a crap ton of scientists on my board. Uh, I think I only have hex beyonds. Nope, that's not even a scientist. I have a one Professor Sutterkin in my deck that can be curiosity, so I was not worried about that. Um, that that game, I, I think I opened Redacted, and I got a key from Redacted, and that was what put me far enough ahead to win, because you just couldn't keep up with that one extra key that I got for free. Um, you it got was a, a key from Redacted. I did get a key from Redacted. It does happen. It, it, it happens in Sealed. Don't expect that much in Archon. <laughs> But yeah, um, I did get a key off Redacted. Uh, I did have standardized testing as well as another version of removal. The downside is um, most of the times that I had standardized testing in my hand, I didn't want to use it because I have a Lollop the Titanic on board. <laughs> um, and I usually also had another two power creature. I have Hexbeon, two Hexbeons, two Jar Goggles. And I think two separate times I had standardized testing in my hand and I drew it right after I played Neuron Shark, Neutron Shark. So standardized testing didn't do what I wanted it to do, um, but I did play it a few times and it worked out. Um, I won my I won my round one against uh, the opponent. You played round two. Um, like I said, the redacted was really all that was special that came out of that game that I remember. Um, I, I did some silly things with jar goggle. Um, I remember creeping oblivioning. Um, I think I I think I actually got rid of his swindle. No, it wasn't his swindle, it was something else. Um, but yeah, like everything just seemed to go in my favor. It was a close game, but the redacted was what put me over. Um, round two, I played against the person who got second, um, and he, it was really weird. He, um, he never really made a big board, um, and I had a few times where I had four or five creatures and he had none, and he'd play his turn and then still not have any creatures, or maybe have one. Um, and I felt like I was way ahead the whole game. Like I got a key before him, I think, um, and then I got a couple amber, and then he got a key, and then I was like right about to get my second key, and then he took me off of a key, and then he saved the pact at me and hit five creatures, and then played like two untamed creatures or something, 
and like the save the pact really shifted the game because like he board wiped me with the save the pact and I couldn't rebuild a board state and I, I had that I had that problem where I was drawing all my removal but he wasn't playing anything to remove so it was like I'm gonna play this for an amber and then he's gonna play a creature that I could have removed if it was on the board last turn um, so it was just kind of like a bad sequence of hands but still no, nothing against uh, nothing against the player. He is an amazing player. He won the store champs at our uh, tournament, so another very strong player um, who deserved it uh, without a doubt. But things and just he didn't was, go too uh, well He was for actually me. he was my round one opponent, so we just traded opponents for round two. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So if you won round one, we would have been playing round two, and one of us wouldn't have topped anyway. <laughs> no, I mean maybe, maybe. <laughs> Crazy, crazy. So yeah, round two I did lose. Uh, it was kind of a wonky game, but I feel like I learned a little bit from that game just for future games, which was kind of good. Um, sometimes you play games of key for it and you feel like you win or you lose, you don't really learn anything, and that was one of those games where I feel like I feel like I just like learned little intricacies that, that aren't specific to cards, but I was like, man, I, I, very rarely do I see people win without anything on their board, and, and that, that happened to me. I was like, oh, that, that sucks. Uh, so... That was round two. Uh, I was going into round three, and I played against an opponent who I have never played against before. Uh, someone who pretty much ex almost exclusively goes to that card shop. Uh, they don't come to our local very often, and if they do, I have not played them in tournament. Um, and our game was pretty back and forth. Uh, by this point, it was the third round, and uh, that was also three days ago. I'm, I'm trying to remember as much about it as I possibly can. Um, I, I don't remember anything super special happening. Um, I remember the the biggest thing I remember is he got he had a turn where he got like eleven amber off one turn, and I literally had to race him for my third key because he had I think I had two keys to zero and then he had like sixteen amber and I literally had nothing in my hand to stop a key so I was like all right I have to do something now I played a couple cards he got a key and then. I was like, he got more amber, so he literally had enough amber for both of his last keys, but he only had one forge, so I knew I had two more turns minimum, and I just erased him. I played Eureka, and then I played I played Eureka, and it archived whatever, and then I played a Jar Goggle, and I put uh, an unlocked gateway under the Jar Goggle, and then I played a Neuron Shark, Neutron Shark, and Neutron Shark destroyed the Jar Goggle, uh, and then unlocked gateway everything. I think it was that. It was it was something of that nature. I used Jar Goggle with uh with Unlocked Gateway, uh to like answer him, uh and the Eureka giving me the three Amber, uh plus I think something else. No, that's my only Amber gain in that deck for Logo. So the Eureka gave me three Amber. He got a key, and then I had enough for my third key. Uh, before before he could forge his, and he just he literally drew his hand and was like, I can't stop it, and I I won by a very like I was ahead the whole game and I still won by a hair, um, and my my I guarantee you my my adrenaline was going and my heart was beating and uh I barely made it in I I I think I got third I don't it doesn't matter I got third or fourth, um and then we wanted to try to drive back to our other local game store for their tournament. Um, so for top four, uh, we, we unfortunately didn't actually play out top four. We kind of just did die rolls to see who got what mat. So potentially I could have gotten a first or second place mat, but I much rather would have guaranteed a top four mat and then got to go play in another tournament versus spending 40 minutes there and then maybe getting a first or second place mat. And then if I lost, I got the same thing I would have got anyway. And then I didn't get to play Keyforge anymore the rest of the day. So, and if, uh, if fantasy flight is listening. We did not roll dice. We did not roll dice. <laughs> we 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 uh we had some quick games. Yeah, it was. I mean, over overall, it was it was. We're gonna roll to see who <laughs> goes first, and then whoever goes first has to, or who who whoever whoever goes second had to concede to their opponent. That was that was our that was our technique. Well, they didn't have to. They chose to. <laughs> yeah, chose yeah. To. It was it was out of it was a lot out of, of people courtesy. wanted to go first. Well, that's the thing is is the thing is like I think three of the three people in top four were all trying to go to the other tournament too. So like they wanted the games to be fast, and uh, I just and I, I, have, who... I have a huge amount of respect for the other players who were were willing to try and speed up the game so that we could go back and play in another yeah. tournament. So so shout out to the... all the people at that at that game store too that wanted to uh, 
support and and help out the the other semi local players. And it worked out because the person who I think uh, who wasn't coming back to the other store ended up coming first place. So yeah, he got yeah, all the, the guy games. who got the mat, uh, the first place mat, was the only one who didn't go to the other tournament with us. So that's that that seems fair. I mean that that's a that's a and happy also, ending to the day for everybody. The top cut was something that like the store owner was doing extra. The software itself didn't make a top cut for us. Yeah, yeah and that's it, and it just so happened like. It, it, Basically, at the beginning of the tournament, that like you guys could play out for which playmat each person gets at the end. But the system wasn't keeping like, track of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, at the end of the standings was the end of it. So it got yeah. reported. And the way it worked out, actually, uh, <clears throat> the the games, if you want to call them that, that were played for top four, ended up putting everyone in the exact same order that the standings were. Yeah, so it's, it's almost as if we didn't have to even play those really fast games with those like turn two concedes yeah. it's, it's almost so as if that first didn't place need to at the end of rounds ended up first second place ended up seven second and third and fourth ended up third and fourth yeah so so playing out top four really didn't change anything whatsoever and we still got to go play more key forward so yeah. super hype um yeah it was a fun day but yeah it was a great day i had a lot of fun that was cool um but yeah i got i got a play mat one of my one of my milestones in key forge is officially checked off uh it sucks because like officially it's checked off but i'm just like that was a seven person tournament i don't does that count like yeah it counts but does it does it count like you know you got a top well, format in a 25 person tournament <laughs> but uh 26 please don't discount my accomplishments oh my bad yeah i'm just sorry <laughs> i also i mean yeah i came 10th at a vault tour anyway oh i know your, 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 your accomplishments are our bridges over mine and i'm still underwater yeah, I just got to We got to have another vault tour close enough to us because I think Atlanta, the one that I went to, was the last one that was like three states or closer. Yeah, yeah. The, the next closest one we had was like Tennessee or something, right? Like that's that's all. Definitely... No, Tennessee would have been closer. The next, I think it was one of the Carolinas was the next closest one. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, that's still too far for me. But I went to Atlanta for a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. That's that's probably about my limit for card game vendors. <laughs> Atlanta's yeah. like the max, and that's still like if I. Really well, what are you gonna do to... when uh, when one of us wins this prime and we both gotta go to Worlds? Oh, I mean, we'll we'll fly to Worlds. That's fine, but that's like, fair. That's man, fair. like any more than eight or ten hours in a car. I drove to Jersey and back once. Like I drove to Jersey and then drove back the next week, and that was twenty hours each way. And that was like, I can do it. I'm capable, but I just mm, I'd rather fly. But Atlanta is yeah. like not worth flying, so it's like that that tough trade off. I don't want to fly for I, events that aren't worlds. Like I'm not yeah, gonna go to I've a vault tour in California. Like it's just not gonna happen. But, but yeah, worlds is a big one, and uh, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll see you at top eight to. at the prime champs, right? Yeah, I mean we're we're I mean we're probably driving up together for the prime champs. Oh yeah, definitely. And then uh, that's what I mean. We'll see each other in top eight. Like we're gonna we're gonna be sitting next to each other, playing oh, our for opponents sure. in top eight. Yeah. I wonder Hopefully what they're going to do for that. Is, is, is there already an official, like, is there a top cut, or is that just based on entries? Do we know any details about the Prime oh, other than there that? there will be a top cut for sure for Primes. Yeah. Because I think... I well, think I know it's not going to be standings. I just don't know. Cut. Okay. Yeah, I know it, in Yu-Gi-Oh! it scales based on entries. Like, 500 is top 32, and then 1,000 is top 64. Not exactly that. That's not the right number, don't quote me. But, like, that's, like, a, a paraphrase of what their system is like, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I don't think the top is going to scale. Uh, it is a one-day event, so I imagine it'll be Swiss rounds, and then I can't see it going further than top 16. Yeah, top 16. Maybe I mean, top, top 8 cut. even wouldn't be surprising, but 16 would but be But I think nice. it'll be top 8 for the top cut, and then um, I know 8th through 2nd get the Grim Reaper play mat, oh, so and 1st nice. place gets the, uh, what's his name, Nezik the Forgotten. I think the anomaly, a, yeah. the fat dragon that the has big dragon with like the long giraffe neck and its mouth open, yeah, all gnarly looking. So Super first cool. place gets that play mat and the invite to worlds. So yeah, if you guys want to come and meet Cutthroat Research, Prodigy Games, November sixteenth, uh, West Palm Beach, I think we said. Uh, Lakesworth is Lakes the actual Worth. town. Yeah, that's the small town among the other bigger towns that people know the name but of. But also, Lakes Worth, Florida. it's we're probably gonna hit the other even no matter how we do whether we. One of us takes it home or not in this prime. We're probably going to hit the other primes too in this area coming up. Oh yeah, so I, think, I know I think within the one next in Or- Orlando in January or March or something, something like that. Yeah, there's there's one in Winters Park near Orlando. Yeah, and there's another one in St. Pete. 
And then I think there's another one in Seminole, if I remember correctly. I thought, wasn't there, like, wasn't there one event in Tampa and then one in St. Pete, like, the weekend after? It, yeah, it might be. There, there, I think it's, like, there back-to-back are, weekends, which is kind of crazy. There are but... definitely a few more events within the next three months. Yep. There, might, there might be up to four. I remember there being two or three for sure, and then someone pointed out that there was another one in a Florida area, like, before February. Gotcha. Sounds good. So we got a lot of uh, road tripping and driving ahead of us for these events. Yeah, um, they're all, like, within three hours, too, which is great, because we don't yes. have to, like give up a weekend or an extra day off it yeah just be... no hotels or anything like that just drive yeah. up play drive home sounds good um so i mean we've been rambling for a little while we covered a lot of uh a lot of, a lot of topics today uh got through some some more updates that we have for the the past and future tournaments that we're going to be attending um any of you guys any any of you viewers who are listening let, let us know if you guys have played in any store championships yet if any of your local stores have, have held an event uh let us know how you did let us know what deck you played um we want to hear from from the community too and just kind of uh be more be more social with everybody so hang out in discord uh just come talk to us and let us know what you think we just we want more people to discuss keyforge with and if you're attending yeah, your store uh... championships you're exactly the kind of person that we want to be uh Hanging out with, you know, online or off. Yeah, we uh, we barely use our Discord, so give us a reason to. Yeah, yeah, our Discord's pretty pretty dead and stagnant right now, and and that's because me and Tyler have each other on social media. So when we message each other, it's just Facebook's like the go-to because it's already open half the time. Um, but you know, if we see people jump in here and there's some socializing going on, we're, we're gladly gonna jump in and chime in and, and give our two cents on on topics of discussion or any negotiations or uh or chats going on. So discord definitely come hang out if you if you guys are interested uh we got our youtube going i finally uploaded all those videos i apologize again the quality is so bad my webcam's like messed up i don't know what's up with it but it does not focus for crap i don't know if it's lighting based i don't know if it's the camera i don't know what um i am gonna buy a tripod for my phone and just record from my phone from now on i have to figure out which one i want to get and how i want to set it up um future videos at some point there will be a, a change and future videos will be much better quality uh, but between now and then, uh, we're gonna leave. We're gonna leave box openings and stuff to Tyler. We'll make yeah. him do all. That. And I should. Uh, I'm gonna try to get to. We have a single Worlds Collide starter still to open. You still got one of those sealed up. Nice. So. Very cool. I will try to get that up there before the actual launch, which is November eighth. Definitely, that'll be good. Um, so yeah, YouTube, Patreon. We haven't done anything for Patreon yet. We're still trying to brainstorm. Um, we have some ideas. We're, we're trying to narrow down on how we want to do Patreon. Um, I'm going to talk to some of my, my friends work at print shops. I'm going to talk to them about merch, if we can get stickers or like you know business cards or chain trackers. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to try and figure something out for Patreon. Uh, so yeah, even We don't you... want to just beg for money. Yeah, we're definitely going to do something as a, as a, <laughs> as a handout, uh, some kind of monthly rewards or, or et cetera. Um, but if you guys have any ideas for Patreon, or if you guys want to see any specific content on YouTube, we are going to try to get some more gameplay videos up. I know that's been a little bit, uh, lacking just because of our, our time. I mean, we do both work full time. Uh, some, I mean, Tyler works more than full time. Sometimes he works 50 hours a week. So, uh, we're going to get more videos up for you as soon as we can when we get the time. Um, but frankly, prime championships, store championships with all this going on, there's just, there's just not a lot of time for that. So, uh, keep an eye out. It will be coming uh we got box openings how many boxes you have uh ready to ready to crack of set three when it gets released i have three pre-ordered so so there's gonna there's gonna be a total of five five worlds collide box openings entire boxes 10 was it 10 or 12 packs per box 12, 12 packs yeah. per box so that's 60 decks you're gonna see on our oh, youtube sorry, if I mean, if I record the if box. If we record open. them. I'll record mine. I'll, but there's definitely two going up there. I don't care if they're 45 hour long videos. It's whatever to me. I'll record mine. Uh, and you guys should let us know what you pull. Let us know how you're doing. For sure. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for now. We'll be back at some point uh, in yeah. the next week or so. With we another... rambled for a while. I don't <laughs> yeah. think there's any special events going on Saturday. So maybe we'll get an episode uploaded on Saturday. Uh, if not, then just keep an eye out. You can always hit those notification bells and any of those little uh, icons that you know give you notifications when when stuff gets posted up. 
Um, and we will see you next time, hopefully in the next week. See you then. Have a good one, guys.